Hey friends, there are lots of videos on how to start a business, but this video explains one thing they don't tell you, how to set up your business to win government contracts. If you want to bid on federal government contracts that are set aside for minorities or women or service disabled veterans, you have to meet certain requirements. And to meet those requirements, your business has to be set up in a certain way. In this video, I show you the requirements to qualify for each of these programs and what you need to know when you set up your business. First, quick background. The government limits competition for certain contracts to small businesses, and those contracts are called small business set-asides. Now, some set-asides are open to any small business, but some are open only to small businesses who participate in these SBA contracting programs. So let's start by looking at the requirements to get into these programs. First, the federal contracting program for disadvantaged business owners is called the 8A program. And I'm showing you here the SBA webpage with the eligibility requirements. The business must be at least 51% owned and controlled by socially and economically disadvantaged U.S. citizens. And there are also other requirements regarding your finances and demonstrating potential for success, but the ownership and control is the big one. And here are the eligibility requirements for the woman-owned small business federal contracting program. To qualify for these set-aside contracts, the business must be at least 51% owned and controlled by women who are U.S. citizens, and those women must manage day-to-day -day operations and also make the long-term decisions. The Economically Disadvantaged Women-Owned Program is basically a subset of this program with additional financial criteria. And here are the eligibility requirements for the Service Disabled Veteran-Owned Small Business Program. The business must be 51% owned and controlled by one or more service disabled veterans who manage day-to-day -day operations and who also make long-term decisions. So the key thing I want you to understand about these three programs is that there are two different things. There's the ownership requirement and the control requirement. It's not enough for the person to own 51% of the business on paper. That individual also has to manage day-to-day -day operations and also make the long-term decisions. So let's say a husband and wife are starting a business. She would need to own at least 51% of the business if she wants to get certified as a woman-owned business. But majority ownership is not enough. She has to actually control that business and that control has to be reflected in the company documents. For example, there was an SBA case where a business won a woman-owned small business set-aside contract and was later ruled ineligible for the contract because even though the woman owned 51% of the business, her husband held the company's highest officer position and he appeared to be managing its day-to-day -day operations. So here's the key takeaway. Make sure your governing documents are in order. If your business is organized as a partnership, this is your partnership agreement. If you're an LLC, this is your operating agreement. And if you're a corporation, this is your articles and bylaws and meeting minutes. These documents must make it clear that you control and manage the company. For example, the document should establish that your position is the highest position in the company and that you are responsible for setting policies and hiring and firing employees and negotiating and committing to contracts. And you're the one who controls the bank account and signs the tax return. You also should be the highest compensated person in the company. And one mistake people sometimes make is using different titles and those titles aren't reflected in the company documents. So check your governing documents and make sure your role is clearly established. Hey friends, I'm glad you found my video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions or something you'd like me to make a video on, post it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.